Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and we are going to do the 10th recent lesson out of the Big Ideas book, and this is on using chords. So let's take a look at what we have here and uh, get started. Uh, the first thing we have is we're going to talk about this theorem, and it's called the Corresponding Chords Theorem. And here's basically what it says. If uh, you have a circle, um, and it could be in the same circle or in congruent circles, uh, the two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. Remember, if and only if means work, it works both ways. So what it's saying here is these two minor arcs right in here are congruent if these chords would be congruent. So if AD, AB sorry, and DC are congruent, then arc AB will be congruent to arc DC. And vice versa, the if and only if means it works the other way around. If these arcs are congruent, then these chords will be congruent. And this works in congruent circles, or if you have um, in the same circle, or if you have two separate circles. The next is the perpendicular chord bisector theorem. We're going to do some examples of this in, the, in a minute, but anyway, let's uh, continue on. Uh, perpendicular chord bisector theorem. So if a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and the arc. So basically, whenever I have a radius, uh, sorry, diameter in the circle, and I have any chord, doesn't matter where I put it, as long as it's perpendicular, what ends up happening is it makes these two parts right there congruent. So FH and HD will be congruent. So what this theorem is telling me is that these two parts right here, as long as this is perpendicular to a diameter, will be congruent. So it bisects the diameter, uh, the diameter bisects the chord, and the other part of it is this FG arc will be congruent to the DG arc. So not only does it do the chord, but it also bisects the arc. And our next one here, let's move this up, uh, the perpendicular chord bisector converse. If one chord of a circle is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, then the first chord is a diameter. So basically what it's saying is, since I've got these two chords, right, if this is a perpendicular bisector right here, we could see that this is congruent and that's perpendicular, then that's got to be the diameter. That's what that theorem is just saying. And then the next one is equidistant chords. Here's how I can tell if chords have the same length. I'm, I'm going to take a look at this, and it says in the same circle or in congruent circles. Two chords are congruent if and only if. Again, if and only if means it works the same way. They are equidistant from the center. So here's the center. If this distance and that distance right there are the same, then these two chords are congruent and vice versa. So if these are congruent right here, these two distances are the same. Remember, we measure distance perpendicular. That's why you see this perpendicular, right? We don't measure it this way. We don't measure it that way. We measure it perpendicular to it. So as long as those two are going to be perpendicular and congruent right here, because that's how we're measuring that distance, then these chords will also be congruent. Let me erase some of this stuff in here. Okay. Okay, and it also works the other way around. If the chords are if these chords right here are, per, are congruent, then they have the same distance from the center. So kind of a quick lesson today. Um, let's move on to some of the examples and we'll see how we can apply these. Let's do the examples in our student journal. So we're gonna go to page 292 and we're gonna do numbers one through eight. All right, let's uh, take a look at these problems. On the first one, it says that we've got um, the measure, uh, find the measure or the arc of the chord in circle Q. And we are given some info right here. We need to find the measure of arc W to X. So we need this measure right there. Since this is 42 degrees here, this will be 42 degrees here. This arc will also be 42 degrees because that's a central angle. And taking a look at the next one. Uh, we need to find the length of y to z. So this arc is 42 degrees. This arc will be 42 degrees. Since these two arcs are both 42 degrees, these will have the same measure. 
uh, since these arcs in the same circle are congruent. This works in the same circle or in congruent circles. So this will be 3.6. All right, so for the next one, uh, we need to find W to Z. So W to Z is this length right there. Be careful, that's not the arc that they're asking for. They're asking for the length, so let's erase that. Um, and that'll also be 9.2. sure why it did that, but well, 9.2. Okay, so this, because this is 9.2, that will be 9.2. And how do I know this? Because if these are both 142, then these are going to be the same angles in here as well, vertical angles, so these arcs are going to be congruent. So speaking of those arcs, the next one is to find the measure of arc x to y. Well, if this is 42, let's look at it in this sense. Um, let me change the color here so you can kind of see it a little bit better. So this is 180, because that's my semicircle. This is 42 degrees, so that leaves me with this part right here, which would be 180 minus the 42, which would be 138 degrees. So that means this arc will also be 138 degrees because of that central angle. All right, moving on to number five. On number five, we're told that this is perpendicular. We have to find the value of x. And this is our diameter. Since that's our diameter, these two will be congruent because that will be the perpendicular bisector. So I could say 2x minus the 4.1 equals the x minus the 0.5. Solving this, subtract x from each side. That gives me x. Add 4.1 to each side would be equal to 3.6. All right, moving on to the next problem. Same situation. This is a diameter. This is perpendicular, so these parts will be congruent. So 3x minus the 5 will be equal to the 2x plus the 1. So x will be 6. All right, let's move on to number seven and number eight here. These are the last two that we have to do. On number seven, here's what we're given. We are given that this piece is three and that piece is three, so those are congruent. If we have chords that are equidistant, so that are congruent, the same distance from the center, then the chords themselves are congruent. So 5x minus 2 will equal the 3x plus 2. And here I'll get 2x equals 4, so x is 2. So since x is 2, they want us to find the radius of the circle. So that means that, let's use another color here, this is my radius. That's how you're going to have to draw that. This piece we know is 3. We know that this is going to bisect it, so if x is 2, this length right here will be 5 times 2 is 10 minus 5 times 2, 10 minus the 2 would be 8, so each of these will be 4. Same thing, you can verify it on the other side. This will be 6 plus 2, which is 8, so each of these will be 4. So this piece is 4, this piece is 3, and there's my radius. So this is a... Pythagorean triple, so we know r is going to be 5, but I'll show you just in case you don't see that. We'll say 3 squared plus the 4 squared equals the r squared. So that's where I got that 5 from. So moving on to number 8. It's the same situation that we have here. These two will be congruent because they are equidistant from, well, mainly because I know that this piece is 20 and that piece is 20. So the chords are congruent, so now that means they're going to be the same distance from the center. So I could say the 4x minus the 5 equals the x plus 4. Over here, 3x equals 9. x is going to be 3. But again, they want this radius right in there. So I can plug this in. We could do it this way. We'll do it the other way this time. This is 3 plus the 4, which would give me 7. So if I take that triangle out, that's 7. This whole chord was 20, so that'll be 10, and now I can solve for the radius. 
Okay, so then 7 squared plus the 10 squared will be the r squared. So over here we get 49 plus 100 is your r squared. So the square root of 149 is r. And this is prime, so we cannot break this down. And if you put this as a decimal, that would be about 12 point, I'm looking at the calculator here, 207. That would be approximately your R. So either way is fine, depending on how I ask the question, if I ask for a decimal or leave it in square root form. All right, so those were the examples. And like I said, today's lesson is not too bad. It's uh, building up for another one. So make sure you do the homework. Uh, take your time with it. Make sure you understand them all. And uh, uh, good luck with it. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe. All right, Mr. N out.